It's halfway through the season, and we are looking at the top 10 quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends, telling you who's going to fall out, who to target for the second half breakout, and going through a ton of news. Make sure you subscribe and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's Christmas time. Yeah. <laughs> I did not approve this. Oh my gosh, Mike. Yeah. You just made me so happy. <laughs> that is. I didn't know this was coming. I got 50 more seconds of these bells. 50 more seconds of Christmas bell. Everyone's tuning out. No. Nope. It's nah. not Christmas time. It is for me. Deucers, are you in on this? I put the drop in his board. So oh. you're in on November 1st Christmas? No. No, no. I it was is. just playing along, but no. And you don't have to be. You don't have to be, but you can't take it away from me and Jason. Yeah. I just prefer maximum joy for a smaller amount of time than minimum joy for a longer amount of time. Well, so what you can do is have maximum mm -hmm. amount yeah, you can. for longer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, November 1st, welcome in the fantasy footballers. <laughs> it's Merry Christmas to the Raider fans today. Oh, that's true. You got three presents under the tree. Or maybe uh, three I lumps mean, of coal for those three gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, Josh it's McDaniels, Sayonara. Their offensive coordinator, Lombardi, gone. You need a general manager. There's one available. The Raiders have fired theirs. And yeah. uh, Devontae Adams has been named interim head coach, <laughs> GM, play caller. Uh, this is great. This is great news. It, it's is outstanding. It, is it? Outstanding. You think, like, I, from the point of view of, like, these people should not have been in charge of an NFL franchise, that part is, is great that we Raiders fans get to move on because these should not have been the people running your team. But uh, your owner has now been doing this for a very long time. Do you actually have confidence that that Davis is going to make a good decision? Oh, no. No, 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 but it can't really get worse. It definitely can't. No, 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 it can't. No, I mean, I Devontae mean, you can't, Adams Devont this last week had one catch yeah. for 11 yards. This like, is such good. Look, I have Josh Jacobs and Adams everywhere. I'm thrilled. That tells you where I'm at. Okay. I, I am so excited. They're moving Aiden O'Connell as to the quarterback position. He is a, a gunslinger. He's going to make tons of mistakes. Start all your defenses against him. But he's going to he, – he's just young enough to completely – listen to anything Devonte adams tells him to do this is great news let's see i'm pulling because he played so in week four aiden o'connell was the quarterback and see adams had 13 targets was eight for 75 so yeah i mean that's you got yeah, a that's new, acceptable and your offensive coordinator has been swapped out you literally had josh jacobs just saying like i i can't do anything i'm not the one who decides what to do on offense to me it, it is it is some hope not for the team, but for fantasy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the the, the, the team, team has had no hope for twenty years, going down the drain. Um, but yeah, th this is this is very very good news. And O'Connell, I think he can get it done. I mean, at least for fantasy purposes. And that's that's all we're caring about here. I I I definitely believe this is an upgrade. Um, uh, I I am excited about that. We got a lot of news to talk about, but first. Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. Well, uh, we have our Hungry for More candidates this week. I'm going with Gus Edwards, running back for the Baltimore Ravens. It's been a difficult world 
for the running back room in Baltimore for multiple years, dealing with the Lev Bells and Devonta Freemans and uh, what was it, Latavius Murray, right? He was, was he, he was there? part of Baltimore. Probably. Um, you, Drake London. Or, or not Drake London. Uh, uh, Kenyon, Kenyon Drake. Drake. Kenyon Drake is in and out of that roster. J.K. Dobbins injuries for multiple years. I think you finally have a little bit of confidence and clarity. Like Justice Hill's involvement and opportunities are not that high. Gus Edwards, three touchdowns last week. He's got 13 red zone carries in the last three weeks. It's one of those, the doubts that you have with the rushing quarterback is that they're going to get those opportunities. You know, uh, you guys brought up yesterday, Lamar had a bad week because they had three rushing touchdowns. Like that's not a given for a rushing quarterback that they're going to hand the ball off in the red zone, but they've been doing it. And, um, you know, they play Seattle, then they play Cleveland, they play Cincinnati at home. Gus Edwards, I think you're going to get 15-plus opportunities here on out. I'm hungry for more of yep. that sweet Gus bus. Um, my hungry for more player is Scary Terry, Terry McLaurin. He has been heating up. Two weeks in a row, he's a top 20 wide receiver. The last three weeks, he has a 26% target share, and my favorite part, about what happened at the trade deadline is that the Washington Commanders said, "Hey, let's go crazy. Let's just let's trade away our really good defensive line and make sure that we can't win games, but we're going to be in a lot of shootouts." And I think Sam Howell will be throwing the ball non-stop. Um I mean, right now Washington ranks number 2 in pass rate over expectation. Their defense is going to be worse. And if Terry McLaurin is kind of establishing himself as he should, as that 26% target share, uh, the pie is growing. Uh, his opportunity is there. His talent is there. I'm I'm really excited for to, to see what he can do in an offense that has to play catch up to a bad defense. I think by implication, you could toss a hungry for more Sam Howell, hungry for more mm -hmm. Jahan Dotson, hungry for more Logan Thomas, and even – a player I picked up on waivers, Jamison Crowder, who had a 20-point fantasy week, who Curtis Samuel's foot is hurt. So monitor that. Seven targets. Uh, uh, I think you're right. I think the commander's defense is going to be uh, one to target if you are a, have an offensive player on the other side, but then that means Sam Howell can live fun and fancy free. Mm -hmm. and I'll jump in, and I'm hungry for more bananas. Give me. Will Levis. I couldn't believe this was the name you had in this segment. This, why am I hungry for more Will Levis? Because of Derek Henry. <laughs> it has nothing to do with Will Levis. And maybe like you're saying Will Levis yes, provides that, a path for Hopkins and Henry? That is the point. That, that is the hope. Much like the Raiders, we have some hope no, moving forward for the offense. Maybe things can be fixed. Maybe things can be fixed for the Tennessee Titans because they were broken with Ryan Tannehill as the quarterback. And this team, I think, like even when Tannehill is healthy, assuming Levis doesn't fall on his face in the next few weeks, they're going to find out if he is the guy. And we will all find out if he's the guy. Like, we got, like, Derrick Henry's best uh, – uh, let me confirm it, but I'm pretty sure it was Derrick Henry's best snap share of the year because they were actually winning. Uh, so second best, second best. But we had 22 carries – we hadn't seen over 13 carries in in a few weeks, so it was just it was great to see a positive game script. Now, can will can he actually be that guy? We'll, we'll we will find out. He completed only 36 percent of his passes when he was under pressure, so teams will figure that out and they will start putting pressure onto him. But it's just it's nice to see a path where a defense actually has to be worried that Will Levis is going to go deep. I think I, – I just got word. Uh, T.G. Watt is, quote, hungry for Will Levis. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I believe it. Um, so we're going to – I look, he, Thursday night, right? Yeah, this, this matchup is so interesting to me <clears throat> because it's two great head coaches with two bad teams that still win games. That's fair, and the secondary for Pittsburgh is bad, but the, the pass rush with T.J. Watt is good, so – We'll see it on display right away. Yep. And I get it. I, I'd be, you know, Hopkins seemed maybe dead when Tannehill went down. Yeah. Because you thought you were getting 
Will Levis and then, you know, Malik Willis and some combination of ineptitude, and that was not what we got from Will Levis. So that was Hungry for More presented by Uber Eats. Get almost almost anything delivered with Uber Eats. An offensive line? No. Nope. Mm-hmm. Nope. Mm-hmm. No. A, a, a carton of OJ? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, could, you could do that. Uh, order now on the app. Product availability may vary by region. See the app for details. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Are you guys, uh, are you OJ drinkers? I love like, some absolute no pulp orange juice. But are do you order it? Like, do you get yeah, it on the yeah. regular? Yeah. Well, if I, if I go out to like a, a breakfast restaurant, yeah. I'm Why not at the house? I have it at the house in the fridge right now. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm just an OJ drinker. I, I drink it at home. I drink it at restaurants. I'll go What's through. What's in your mug right now? Uh, oh my gosh, I have orange <laughs> juice. Um, no, this is. I just water. feel like we forget to to get it. And it's delicious. It's. But I feel like I had it a lot as a kid and I don't have a lot of orange juice. It's very, very good. But it's filled it, with sugar, though. Yeah, right? it's it's a ton of sugar, and like old man stomach over here. The, mm. Like right in the morning, let's just put let's just like the highest pH of acid my, we my, can put right in the tummy. Can I say uh, something about my father, who has the, he's the proverbial iron stomach uh, and does not care. He's seventy years old now, or about to be. He will regularly get up in the middle of the night. I'm talking like one, two in the morning. He wakes up, and just wet his whistle. He'll. <laughs> With, with some he will go out into the kitchen and he will fill up a tall glass of orange juice <laughs> yeah. and, he, and he will house it in the middle of the night and just go back to bed. Because he's like, you know, you know what I need right now? Reflux. Acid. He doesn't. I don't know how he does it. Does he sleep standing up? I mean, when he tell him, when he tells me this, I'm like, I'm like about to be 40. I'm like, I could not touch OJ at night. And my dad is just putting down a whole glass just as a casual. Midnight glass of OJ. What a beast. I know. I know. It's crazy. All right. Into the news we go. We talked about the Raiders firing everyone. Uh, The interim head coach will be Antonio Pierce, who is a former Giants linebacker. And uh, I don't have the name in front of me of their interim offensive coordinator. Uh, Is that that news been released? It sounded like Herba Tree, Herba something. Give me me the name over there. We got three producers that can quickly look this name up. Um, just scream it when you find it, okay? But they are, uh, they've been terrible. I mean, Bo Hardegree. There yeah, it is. It's not hey. a herb, it's Hardegree. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, Samsonite. The a quarterback coach. Aiden O'Connell expected to start. I look at Aiden O'Connell as the best option for that team, yeah, willing to throw the football downfield, look great in the preseason. Mike just brought up the numbers for Adams. They when, were, uh, but also in that week for Jacoby, terrible. Yeah, I mean that's that's the big that that's my concern is like it, it was watching um watching Jimmy play this week. He's you know he had a really bad injury like a we think that something might be catastrophically wrong. I believe he went to the hospital after the injury, and then we when we got the message, it was no. Thankfully, it's not nearly as bad as it could have been. But like we had a couple games where Jimmy was you know, supporting both Adams and Jacoby Myers. Aiden O'Connell, it might be fine and dandy for Devontae Adams, but I can't imagine that, like, if you have both or both him and Jacoby on a weekly basis going to have a good output. Yeah, I would have a lot less confidence in Jacoby Myers. Yeah, well, that sucks because Jacoby was balling out. Um, Adams will be the, the squeakiest of wheels. Yeah. Also, uh, as a reminder, that that was the Chargers game where uh, O'Connell played. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, Josh Jacobs, eleven targets. Okay, we like that. That's, yes, baby. Yeah, we like that. That makes sense. I just dealt him. <laughs> well, that was dumb. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Jason, I'm, or sorry, Mike, I'm going to give you the floor here. Falcons head coach Arthur Smith names Taylor Heineke starting quarterback for Week Nine. <laughs> what? That's uh we sure about this? Cuz I've been I was just grinding Desmond Ritter tape. And I pulled myself out of the toxic group think. And I was watching I'm like this this is the guy. This is the guy for the Atlanta Falcons. 
And Arthur Smith, I don't know, he he has fallen victim to to the group thing. He is a Maybe, sheep now. What's the opposite of toxic? Maybe it's just like and, and, accurate group thing. <laughs> what if it's just like anti venom? <laughs> antidote? I mean, what if it's just like consensus group think is correct? Right. About maybe it's eyeballs. Yeah. The the point being Toxic Arthur, Vision. Like that is the I mean, he will Arthur Smith will, It was will, a will week not, later, yeah, man. He will he will not acknowledge this at all, but this is the ultimate eat crow one week later. I I mean, come on. This guy sucks. <laughs> Dude, this the, guy The NFL needed a villain and Arthur Smith <laughs> yeah, said he's, uh, he's I got hold it. my beer. <laughs> I I'll play the heel. I'll play the heel. <laughs> yeah, so Taylor Heineke, I mean, this is uh, potentially positive news for the passing game because yeah. much like, you know, Sam Howell or, you know, some of these quarterbacks that are willing to drive the ball oh, down the field. Taylor will rip it. He will rip it. And and so your first reaction is, hey, Drake London. Kyle Pitts. Drake London, you're going to have a chance. And then, ah, Durr! he's got a groin injury. Yep. Drake London is, is banged up. So – yeah, Kyle Pitts or Johnny Smith. It's possible. You know, if Drake London sits, is it Matt Collins? Is it Van Jefferson? Is it it's no one for yeah. your team? Yeah. Josh Dobbs, Arizona Cardinals starting quarterback, traded. Yeah, you were saying you smelled some funny business going on, and then and then the next There's, thing you know, you Josh know, Dobbs was traded away. Um it makes complete sense for all parties involved. Heads to the Vikings and uh yeah, I mean, for what it's worth, now I agree with you that Kyler's going to start. Yeah. There was just something weird about the order guess, of operations. You're saying next week, not this week. Next week, although I do think this week is a slim possibility. Sure. I'll leave the door open, but I believe by next week. It's still funny business to me for a coach to come out and it was, Kyler will not be playing. We're going to, you know, we'll figure out who it's going to be. And then it was, no, I've reviewed the tape. Yeah, that was weird. That's, oh, you have to lie sometimes. You, you can't be like, we're in the midst of trade trend. You, uh, but you don't have to say anything. Yeah. Like, there's no practice going Okay, you're on. saying because he just added more words. Yeah. He didn't, he didn't need like, to be like... He, he got caught in the lie where it's like, I just have to start throwing out details. But not only that, but his lie was to throw the guy under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I don't think... He's Bob's not going to be our starter. Are you trading him? No, he's just really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, maybe uh, maybe that wasn't the best way to go about it. <laughs> Vikings did trade for Josh Dobbs. I don't know. Here, here's where I am with Josh Dobbs and the Vikings. First, uh, Jaron Hall starting this week. It won't be Dobbs. Now, Dobbs will – this will be the third offense he learns in less than a calendar year. I mean, he came straight into Tennessee and started. He makes such a good impression on these franchises. He goes to Arizona and he starts immediately. I mean, this is a late trade for, for mm -hmm. yes. Josh Dobbs. I am – I am concerned for Jefferson and Addison still. Josh Dobbs is very competent, but it didn't translate into like consistent value for Hollywood Brown. Correct. And what it did was it translated into the third most targets to the tight end position. So if I had TJ Hawkinson, I would be breathing somewhat of a sigh of relief in that I have somebody competent to move you know, first downs. He can scramble for first downs. The ball's going to move down the field. That is going to be better for Addison and Jefferson just in that respect of, you know, Jaron Hall, the rookie, is not going to be as good as Josh Dobbs. But Hawkinson, I'm I'm a little bit more, you know, at ease. The other two guys, it's still going to be some up and down. Yeah, I think it'll be a little bit of up and down. But but Dobbs, while Dobbs, you know, obviously went one and seven with the Arizona Cardinals, there's very little talent around him, especially once they lost James Conner. Hollywood is good, but they just didn't have a lot of pieces. There's a lot more uh, competent, quality players for the Vikings. Their defense is better, too, that's going to help the offense as well. Um, th what this shows me is that the Vikings are still absolutely in it to win it. They're not losing Kirk, Cous Kirk Cousins and saying, like, okay, well, we got to look for the future and you know maybe it'll be better to get a draft pick. They're trying to make moves. They're trying to win. Do I believe they are – in the playoffs right now, if the yes, playoffs started yes. today. That is pretty crazy. Their schedule coming up is very winnable, and, and Dobbs can pick up this playbook very, very easily. He comes from the same system. Super smart guy. He's an actual rocket scientist. 
um, with an uh, aerospace engineering right. degree. So it uh, is going to be an adjustment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I he averaged 196 yards a game in Arizona. Cousins was about 300. Oh man! And so the, in that regard, you're going to have more balance. You're not going to probably have them passing to the same, you know, top two. I think top three pass uh, to run situation. Over expectation. Yeah, but I mean, it is better than what you had. Now there were rumors about Jameis Winston. I would have been more excited about Jameis Winston with those wideouts. But it was yep. a good move for the team. And like you said, that means that they're competing, which means Jefferson wants to come back. Mm -hmm. um, but there is not an existing rapport. You know, Cousins was really building something with Addison. And that part is a bummer for me. Um, Jonathan Gannon, speaking to earlier, said, you know, week nine starting quarterback is not fully decided. So it could still be Kyler this week. The Lions acquired Donovan Peoples-Jones from the Browns for a uh, – DPJ had dropped out of favor with the coaching staff in Cleveland. Certainly. And so what's your read on this? Because this like he is he's a competent deep threat for a team. And the the quotes on Jamison Williams have not been favorable. Not not that they're out on him, but it's more of a look, the guy's just not he's not where we need him to be. He's not ready yet. Which is I mean, that that's kind of unfortunate for a ready yet. It's, uh, it's, it's year I, two. Yeah, I get it, but I mean, it's definitely a red flag. But does that is this does does uh, Peoples Jones going to the Lions change how you think of their wide receiving room? Not really. I think that this is a replacement for Marvin Jones. It re really one hundred percent. When I saw this move, it says to me that they just do not trust Jamison Williams to be able to step up to being an every down wide receiver. They they just don't. They don't think it's going to happen. And so that's how I read it. Yeah, I, I'm not as pronounced in the – I just think it was a product of opportunity to pick up some depth when you lost Marvin Jones. But, bear, I mean, make no mistake, Jameson Williams has been awful. Oof. The He's been absolutely terrible. Uh, PFF grades aren't everything, but uh, Kyle just pulled this up. Among 106 wide receivers with 15 or more targets, Jameson ranks 106th in PFF wide receiver grades. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Yeesh. if you're a playoff team, you have to add depth at this position when you've dealt with injury, too. That was today's News and Notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quick break, and we'll be back with the Thursday Night Preview. All right, we are going to jump in. We're going to get a Thursday night matchup uh, that is slightly more interesting than what it looked like a week ago. Thursday night breakdown. Will Levis and the Tennessee Titans at three and four take on the four and three Pittsburgh Steelers. The DraftKings Sportsbook line Pittsburgh minus two and a half. The over under is thirty six mm. and a half. Yeah. I do have Pittsburgh in this game. Uh, so we've got uh, Mike Vrabel. Point seven or five seven three career winning percentage. It's okay. been great. They're still alive, three and four with the win. Didn't make a trade, right? Didn't get rid of Derrick Henry. Yeah, trade deadline was. Yeah, I mean, it usually is, but it was. It was. We got spoiled with the McCaffrey trade. Yeah, Mike Tomlin. He's up over uh, 63% career winning percentage. Still the seventh seed right now with Kenny Pickett. Um, and then get, uh, we got another Mike. We got Mike Wright, uh, currently the most points scored in league of record. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for highlighting that. Is that true? It, it is, is true. By like yeah. two points. Really? That's a shame. <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> It's really I, When I saw that, I was very yeah. disappointed. My, my team has quietly been, you know, Pretty the, good. The 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 highest scoring team in the league. Quietly. Yeah. Now loudly. Uh all right. So I, we, I said it pretty quiet. <laughs> Will Levis. We talked about him. You know, I, I am not I mean, these start sick questions on the website for Will Levis. Oh no. I, I mean No, I'm not doing it. I'm not playing Will Levis on Thursday night football against Mike Tomlin. I'm not going to do that. Now I it doesn't mean he can't have a good game. This is a really, really weak secondary. Like really weak. Yeah. But 
you've also got the one week of film, and we've seen this before. You know, a quarterback comes in their first week. No one knows what to expect. I'm certain that they didn't expect Will Levis to throw deep the amount that he did. You brought up the numbers, his completion percentage with pressure. They're going to have some looks for Will Levis in this game that he hasn't seen before. So I, my confidence to play him, no. I will watch him. I will be excited if we can get ourselves a uh, Bananarama drop on the show at some point. Well, he's, he, Does he have to earn that? Is yes. this like a multiple-week thing? Yes. Be, be, uh, you can't go from us insulting you <laughs> with the name Bananarama and then what, you have one good game and now we're celebrating you. I, I, are we insulting him? Are we? Yes. We were, yeah. 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 I mean, because he ate the banana with the peel on. Yeah. 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 And he also drank his uh, coffee with the mayonnaise. Yeah. yeah. And also, he couldn't see pressure. Yes. That there was, was there the, was that, that was the on his college tape. And, and I think that's why his 36% uh, completion rate when pressured. <laughs> He's like, well, how'd, how'd you get here? <laughs> so um, this will be really, really interesting. I can definitely see a broken play down the field creating a, a lot of success here. You have two really smart coaches that are going to game plan well for each other. Um, it seems like Kenny Pickett, he, I mean, Kenny Pickett said, I am 100% absolutely playing. Uh, he has the rib injury. So man, the only thing worse than Kenny Pickett, an injured Kenny Pickett, a rib hurt. I mean, Herbert last year played through a rib injury and he just was not himself. He was not very good. I don't want to watch a Kenny Pickett. That's just not himself. Please give me all of Kenny Pickett. When I have to watch Kenny Pickett games. Yeah, and um, it's just not a lot to go around with Kenny Pickett. It's not a lot to go around. Um, it is going towards Deontay Johnson first. He is the primary yeah. receiver. Yeah, he jumped up to 91% of the snap, so he was, he was a full-time player, and that turned into 14 targets, 8 for 85. Yeah, and, and you're not going to be able to run on the Titans very well, especially when Najee is your running back. So, yeah, I, I, I'm i fine playing Deontay Johnson, yeah, even with a, a somewhat broken Kenny Pickett. And George Pickens, I mean, I, I feel like you've got you've to keep playing him because he's just got the big play options and opportunities. Last week, it didn't work out. One, one catch. One catch for 22 yards. But prior to that, he had two monstrous, monstrous games in a row, and this is where you beat the Titans is in the passing game. Both both of these teams really, you know, the wide receivers are in play. I would play Hopkins, and I would play Deontay Johnson for sure, and then I'd probably play Pickens. The one catch was a touchdown. Yeah. It, it was an impressive play. That was the one where he, he jumped over the two guys. Yeah, it's classic Pickens. The He – I'm with you, Jay, that if I have George Pickens, more than likely I'm going to start him. But I I hate when I'm doing that with a player, and I, but I'm also going, I don't, it will not surprise me if he has a bad game. Because the, the games, the good games that he had, it was no Deontay Johnson, and except for week seven, but that was Deontay Johnson was still only 66% of the snaps. He was still a part time player. We haven't seen. A full-time Deontay, full-time George Pickens, both do something together. I'm with Jay. I'd play him. I, I mean, Pickens or Dotson, Mike? Ooh. That's a good one. Uh, what is the Dotson matchup? I don't remember off the top of my head. Himself. New England. <laughs> <laughs> it's really against Howell it's and the, the offensive coordinator. It's New England and New England. Um, Wow. that is. I guess I'm playing Pickens. I don't know. That's a tough question. The, the the Pickens thing is you're 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 casting your vote with a player that'll be on the field every play. Yeah, but a hurt Kenny Pickett. I'm no, I'm changing. I'm going Dotson. Okay, okay. Najee, Jalen Warren. Ooh. We have to talk about them because they oh. play running back for this team. I yeah, I, I I would be very much looking to bench um, both of these players. Uh, certainly Najee. Uh, Najee last week had. Seven rushing attempts for 13 yards. This is not a good matchup. Najee is on pace for 200 rushing attempts for 760 yards and two touchdowns. That's not good. Um, and yeah. if his name wasn't Najee Harris, 
And if you didn't draft him in the third round or wherever he went, you yeah. feel pot committed to him. Damian Paris or Najee Harris, rest of season? Rest of season. Najee. I will go Pierce. That's where I lean. Henry and Spears on the other side. You mentioned the snap count. They were in the lead. Tajay Spears had uh, just 44% of snaps. That was the second lowest of the season. Three rush attempts, three receptions. Any consideration of flex, uh, you know, on a bye week situation for Tajay Spears? No, I don't. I don't think so. This this is a game that I expect the Titans to be in. You know, the, I in the games where the Titans are getting blown out, I think you're going to see more Tajay Spears, more of him running routes, more you know catch up mode, less Derrick Henry. This is the type of game where it's going to be a close game because neither team can go out and put 30 points up. Spears or Devin Singletary against Tampa Bay? Singletary. Yep. Uh, Spears or Zeke versus Washington? Zeke. Zeke. All right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so the Spears is very low-level option. Then. Well, we are halfway through the year. We got something special for you. Review Asaurus Rex. Review Asaurus Rex. <laughs> wow. That drop is from a long, long time ago. Cretaceous, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, into the midseason review we go. We're going to take a little look. Top players at each position after eight weeks of football. Whether we think players will hang around or not. But your top ten quarterbacks right now is fun. Josh Allen is at number one. This is all in points per game, minimum five games played in four point per passing touchdown leagues. Josh Allen, number one. Jalen Hurts at number two. Justin Herbert, number three. Lamar at number four. Patrick Mahomes at five. Tua at six. Aww. Kirk Cousins at seven. Pour one out. Sam Howell at eight. Justin Fields still sitting there at nine. And Jared Goff at ten. So... You know, it's it's interesting that Mahomes is still in the mix there. He had a, you know, he's only got two finishes inside the top five. He had eight of those last year. There's also only three quarterbacks averaging more than 20 per game. That is Allen Hurts and Herbert. Who's the most likely to fall out of that top 10 for you? The most likely to fall out of the top 10 is definitely Kirk Cousins. Uh, well, not if this is points per game, though. Um no, I, so, I guess some people would have to pass him. I mean, Sam Howell is the most surprising to be here. I do think that with their defense being bad and with his tendency to turn the ball over, I mean, that's really good for fantasy. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it harkens back to the Jameis Winston days where, man, a good pick six to start a game just means you know you're going to have a great fantasy output. You, you're putting yourself in position to keep throwing the ball, but he would be the clear player that is the most surprising up there that I think would fall away by the end of the season the the, the most interesting guy to, to have a conversation about of this list to me uh I'll just so like quarterbacks Allen Hurts Herbert Jackson Mahomes and Tua I think that those six are like plug and play I I'll grimace if I see a bad matchup for Tua but I'm still gonna play him but where are we with Jared Goff because it's like this past week against Vegas, he played really well. I mean, he completed seventy percent of his passes, had two hundred seventy yards, but he didn't get the touchdowns. And the like, it was the Jameer Gibbs show. Where does what is your confidence level with Jared Goff, who is either he's either outside of the top fourteen or he's inside the top six? That's that's kind of been his mo. And it was a home game. We were set up against the Raiders, but we didn't get it. Well, I, I completely agree with you with your assessment of the quarterbacks. I think the top six, Allen Hurts, Herbert, Jackson, Mahomes, and, and Tua, I think those are locks, like into your lineup. And I think everybody else behind that, it's up for grabs in the second half, and I would put Dak at seven. Oh, baby. For the rest of the oh, season. Oh, baby. Based on the schedule and the team and the weapons. So there's not a quarterback I would want more than Dak if it's not those top six. And I would say Kyler is going to enter the conversation soon. Yeah, Kyler is... As, as will Joseph, by the way. Yeah, Joe Burrow. Yeah, yeah. Joe Burrow. Would Kyler. you rather have Burrow rest of season than Dak? I did forget Burrow. 
I would I would rather have Burrow yeah. than so I uh, did maybe Burrow's locked in at s uh, seven then yeah Burrow I think would be seven and then the 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 next three you're talking about Dak Kyler and Justin Fields to me um the health of Justin Fields is obviously a question so you know if you're just taking him right now he's not starting so that's not going to help you but Kyler and Justin Fields I think are going to be people that at the end of this year are going to be extremely important fantasy quarterbacks like the, the you know you you're going to want to have them for the playoff run running backs right now um looking at I, i'm throwing that out of there what? um top 15 running backs minimum of four games played <laughs> what is this a way to jackknife devon a chan and <laughs> into here that's a I hate yeah. that. That's terrible. Yeah. I'm leaving him off. Oh. Uh, number one is Christian McCaffrey at 23. Mm. Number two is Kamara at 18.9. Three is Travis Etienne at 18.8. Four is Mostert. Uh, five is Kyron Williams, who is on IR right now. Zach Moss is six. Montgomery is seven. Kenneth Walker is eight. And Saquon is nine. Eckler is just outside that group right now. Uh, but last game was nice to see, at least in the passing game. Henry's outside that, Gibbs, Swift, and Brees Hall. If there's a name in that bunch most likely to drop out in the second half of the season, or a couple of names, who are you paying attention to? Uh, you know, uh, I, I would say that uh, Zach Moss obviously is going to take a, a massive hit. Um there have we seen any update no, on I, the Jonathan I, Taylor ankle injury? I was hoping you would start talking because I was on Twitter trying to see if there was anything else. So there wasn't much being said about Jonathan Taylor's ankle injury. In fact, they they they, they were asked the question and they basically said there wasn't an issue. But liar, liar, pants on fire. Jonathan Taylor had this game where he was dominating in the first half had a 60-yard run, looked like the super athlete that he is. Yeah, he looked great. Then he comes up hobbled, is kind of uh, hobbling around, jumping on one leg a little bit, and gets one carry in the second half. It, like, obviously something happened there. Um, Did you see the comments, though? I No, that's I, I have not. What, what did they say? Uh, he was asked about that play. He said he even was shown the replay. He said he was fine, not injured, doing toe raises. Yeah, but so I mean, he, was, they, okay, he did toe raises, and then in the in uh, the third quarter, he got a carry up the middle for one yard, and then the next time you see him getting a touch is in the fourth quarter, a catch for two yards. I I understand the way it looks, anecdote, you know, from a perception standpoint, but it is not odd that they had equal carry counts in that game it was the way it came about though it was it was all Jonathan Taylor and then it was no Jonathan Taylor it just seems it seems fishy to me but um yeah it could could be nothing but I agree it it's it smells funny would you expect Zach Moss to continue getting equal touches yeah the rest of season close to it yeah I mean that's kind of what we said three weeks ago 55 45 was I think the number I threw out there I think it's going to be really close between them. I mean, Zach Moss has proven himself, in my opinion. The team has, you know, given him the opportunity, and all he does is go out and chunk off plays. Well, he's got he a, a forty-one-yard run last week. Great matchup this week against the Carolina Panthers. I tried to trade for him for Moss. Really? Yeah, because I feel like he could be had for Cheaper. the cheap. Yeah, and you're, you know, you're in all these bye weeks. I've got like the uh, double bye coming up for a couple running backs. I was like, oh, maybe I just throw Moss in there and get. 10 to 15 carries, maybe a touchdown. I mean, look, it's dirty, but it's working. Where, ETN is who the player that I think is going to drop. <laughs> yeah, because he can't score two touchdowns every week <laughs> for the rest of the season. Yeah, I think he's going to be super solid. I'm. Not, it's not a sell on the talent. It's just literally, you know, regression. Like, you can't be – he's been a top five running back four consecutive weeks. He scored seven touchdowns in four weeks. If he goes – you know, he's a superstar. Man, 30 opportunities. It, it's it's unbelievable how Maybe they, that's false. Maybe I, I'm lying. I I can't believe that they spent day two capital on Tank Bigsby, who looked 
phenomenal in preseason, who's a very good, he's worthy of a day two draft pick, and then they are just, I mean, he played 89% of the snaps, 88% of the snaps the week before. For a running back not named Christian McCaffrey, that is that is insane, especially for a guy who is, you know, dealt with some injuries. So Travis Etienne is is absolutely a full-time uh, workhorse bell cow type of fantasy asset, but you you still cannot possibly think, well, yeah, he's going to he's going to be on pace for 34 touchdowns this year. That, that's unsustainable. It looked like a bad week was brewing last week for Etienne. He was 3.3 a carry and you know, wasn't moving the football and then bam. Had that big uh, monstrous touchdown. Yeah, the receiving touchdown uh, was great. Where I think the most interesting name here for me is Devon Achan. That's what people I know you took him off being the number one points per game, minimum four games played. But where should he, where do you think he will slot in? When we were watching him, we can't forget like yeah. every single play when he touched the ball was like, wow, he just looks so good when when, when he was on. But obviously, Jeff Wilson is back. Uh, you've got Salvin Ahmed is back. And where would you put him in this list? Like, a, I, I, I am probably the least bullish for A. Chan as an end of season league winner. And this is coming from someone who who just kind of paid attention to what Tua and Mostert have on the schedule. When you talk about defensive lines, they're going to face Philly, Kansas City, the Jets twice. Tennessee, who stops the run, Dallas, Baltimore, Buffalo. Oof. Those are all on the sl uh, on the docket. So, look, you will be happy when A-Chan rips a long one. <laughs> nice. It didn't sound right. That's mm -mm. all. It just sounded <laughs> weird. It sounded like some Chipotle. Um, but, you know, his three – he's got three big games. It's three. Like, this is why I took him off the list is because – you have eight games played, and he had three. Yeah, and so it's not that I, I I'm not they discrediting were real him, good. But, yeah, but 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 I mean, like one of those games, he had eight carries. Yeah, he had five touchdowns in three games. If he, let's be realistic here, I think he's a ten to fifteen is where I would have him at running back. Genuinely, you have three guys to use there. You have a tough schedule. He had, and he is coming off a knee injury. I know they they've said as soon as the window opens up, he's going to be back. It's it's still a a an injury to the uh, the device that moves you forward. So it, you can. You're have saying it could it could hold him back in terms of ripping a long one. <laughs> I yeah, <laughs> got that's, it. That's what I'm saying. Um, Jason, well, what's your opinion? Like, where would you slot him in? Like, I, I said, ten to fifteen. I, think, I, Mike, I honestly think ten to fifteen is is uh, is appropriate. Um, he can't possibly score touchdowns on the same pace we you know we we said that about Travis Etienne it's it's just as true with Achan he was scoring touchdowns like crazy that being said his speed and this scheme is a true you know it's kind of like you can't stop Tyree Kill you, you just can't the, the other players on the NFL field are not as fast and if you can get Achan into a position to be in a foot race with the other guys they can't catch him it's impossible because he is faster than them. And so with what we've seen with Mike McDaniel, you, you go, I think he's going to be able to figure out a way to get him two or three massive plays per game. But he is not um, He's not ever going to be a 70% a snap count type of player. He's a smaller back who won't have enough work to be reliable. And I think his floors – will be really low. We we didn't see it. Once he got the job, he was awesome, 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 got injured. We will see low floors ahead. Would you well, rather have Gibbs or Achan? Yeah, I was going to start to throw would, some of those out there. I would rather have Achan. Than Gibbs? Yeah. I, I am not quite as bullish on the belief that Montgomery does not. I, I think when Montgomery is back, they're going to go right back to what they okay, were. So Achan or Montgomery? Montgomery. Okay. Most hurt him or H N. Same thing. That's team. really interesting. I lean it. oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I'm I'm gonna go H N. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with the, the The guy who's hurt. 
Yeah. The the youthful exuberance. I just <laughs> there's no way Moster can do this the whole season, right? And stay healthy and he just hasn't done it. There's there's evidence that A-Chain can't stay healthy. Yeah, no, I I get it. Two injuries for him so far. Would you year. rather have Mostert than than A-Chain? I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I I feel like that you just say one of them and the other's going to be the better one. I just that that would be a tough situation and I would dread having both and decide to start one. I unlike ETN who's going to have 25 opportunities, 30 opportunities on the games he doesn't score a touchdown. A chance probably going to have 8 to 12 on those games. You have more risk and you have weak winning capabilities. Um I guess most of you get an extra game. In that situation, sure. right? Be yeah. Because before the bye, I guess I lean that direction. But, you know, the Kyron Williams, he was on fire, but that's another running back that's a, a bit of a problem because your quarterback situation is unknown. Your team is is heading in the wrong direction. So can Kyron Williams come in and dominate when you don't have to worry about Puka and Cooper as much because Stafford's not back there? I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's it's Saquon is probably a target. Tough sledding. Uh, Saquon should have a good rest of season. The the player that I think I'm most excited about for the rest of season is Brees Hall, because Brees Hall last year looked like a sensational top three running back superstar talent. I this year, I hate you. You hate? Why do you hate me? Because you because you stole him from me. Yeah, uh, yeah, I did baby. <laughs> yes, I did. I tried to get him in league record, and you ended up you sacrificed, I sacrificed Justin, Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson's future in a keeper league. It 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 still feels bad. I told you, I regret the it, trade. It's crazy because um, it's literally the only way Justin Jefferson has been traded in our league of record. Like mm -hmm. I I traded him a couple years ago because I had a major injury, and it was like. I have to fix it. Yeah. And you play for this year. And then you've gotten to enjoy the benefits of Jefferson for two years. And now you did the same thing. Yeah. So uh, hopefully it works out. But I do think Brees Hall, I mean, he, he's up to 65% of the snaps the last couple of weeks. Dalvin Cook is irrelevant. Um, and, and the schedule is pretty nice. There's plenty of uh, good, uh, you know, games ahead you you've got Houston you've got two against Miami you've got the Chargers you've got Atlanta um so it, the Washington Commanders without their defensive line now um all on the docket ahead and it just looks like he's healthy and you you would expect him to have a better second half of the year than the first half of the year that was the expectation coming in and he's had a pretty darn good first half of the year which of these five running backs most likely to break into the top 15 in points per game? Pollard, Jacobs, Bijan, Mixon, and Brian Robinson. Hmm. I will go Josh Jacobs there. I know that the offense has been putrid, but if you look at that list of players, there's only one who is a, you know. Every down. Every down, workhorse, gets the targets, 90% of snaps. I mean, there's how many people play ninety percent of snaps at the running back position in the entire NFL? It, it, in my mind, I, it's it's Saquon, Saquon, Christian McCaffrey, Etn, and Jacobs. I don't know if I'm missing someone off the off the dome, but I mean, that that's a that's like a real superpower mm -hmm. when you're just talking about opportunity. Opportunity is king, and those guys get just the lion's share of opportunity. Yeah, yeah, I um, I get that the explosiveness you don't get it like you would with Bijan right now with mm -hmm. Jacobs. I wonder what happens to all of their talented players this off season. The Raiders, yeah. Uh, I mean, well, Jacobs will be gone. You think Jacobs gets a, a like premier job? No, I think he'll get a uh, a good. Like a, uh, like a Sanders, a, like a yeah. I was gonna say David Montgomery, <laughs> mm. Miles Sanders, something like that. He'll go to a middling to bad team for a three year, mostly. But though really he'll be the guy there. Contract. Yeah, probably. Okay. Let's talk wideouts real quick. Let me give you a lay of the land points per game right now. Tyreek is at number one by a lot. Uh, the the gap between Tyreek and the rest. 
is more than three points per game. A.J. Brown's at two. Jefferson's at three. Diggs at four. Keenan at five. Keenan's had some down weeks lately. Jamar Chase at six. Thielen sitting at seven. Amon Ra at eight. CeeDee Lamb at nine. Puka sitting at ten. Um, beyond that, it's D.J. Moore, Mike Evans, Addison, Nico Collins, and Brandon Ayuk. When you look at the trajectory of these players, I think the one that jumps out to you is Jamar Chase. Like, I wouldn't... Other than Tyreek and A.J. Brown, I don't think there's a player I'd want more than Jamar Chase the rest of the season. I, I would take Brown over Chase, the way things have gone this Yeah, that year. makes sense. But uh, Chase is not... He doesn't belong at six. You know, I definitely want him over Diggs and Allen. Yeah, I I would uh, I would agree with that. Although Diggs is not far behind for me. Diggs has been so consistent, so good. I mean, he's on pace right now for 136 receptions, 1,600 yards, 13 touchdowns on 191 targets. I, I don't think he has gotten the respect of being such a superstar um, as he deserves. And the ironic part is I feel like it's – it's almost because it's too consistent. Like, he doesn't have the game where he goes out there and puts up 44 points. Um, he didn't. Did he have a three-touchdown game this year? He did. Yeah. Yeah, he did. 33 points. And somehow, with three <laughs> touchdowns, wasn't the wide receiver one that week. Interesting. I think it just has to do with the kind of – some negativity around the, the team because they've gone – they've been up and down and struggling and, you know, Diggs is always barking. And I think it's just negative. But you're right. He deserves that respect. When you look at second half fading players, you know, Puka for sure. Puka jumps off the – Thielen potentially. For sure. Um, I think DJ Moore, if you don't get Justin Fields back soon. And I think Jordan Addison. I mean, I I just don't yeah. – there's no way consistency is going to be part of the equation if they're – if the passing volume and you're taking 100 yards of distribution away from them and adding Jefferson. So th those two things are concerning to me when you – you know, I'd rather have CeeDee Lamb than I would Thielen. I'd rather have CeeDee Lamb than Amon Ra. I'd rather have CeeDee Lamb than Keenan mm -hmm. right now. Okay. That was the next name I was so, going to bring up. Was was Keenan is another one that I think, if I had to say who's going to fade from what they've done so far, it's Keenan. We've already seen it happening, but he has not been able to play the role he wants without Mike Williams there. Huge has not been able to step into that Mike Williams role. And so I think defenses can focus a little bit more on Keenan Allen more easily, and it is it's hurt him. So he's still going to be good, but you know if you said, do you want Keenan or Amon Ra? Even though Keenan scored more than Amon Ra, I, I would take Amon Ra. Any other thoughts, Mike? No, I just I was going to ask on Ceedee Lamb if you guys are buying into this. It, it's a mini resurgence because we only it's a couple weeks, but the it it looked like the offense has decided we need to focus on getting the ball to CeeDee Lamb. There was, you know, some hullabaloo in the in the media talking about why is why aren't you focusing on Lamb? And then the last two weeks they have. So it was just how how high up do you have Lamb? I'm yeah, very high. Very, okay. very high. Yeah. Me too. They um the schedule you brought up over the second half for Dallas, not to mention I like I tried to get him before last week and now I feel like the cat is out of oh, the bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's closed now. Tight ends. Top 10 tight ends and fantasy points per game with a minimum of five games played and half point. Kelsey's at number one. Surprise. Andrew's at two. Surprise. Hawkinson at three. Like, okay, we've got our pre <laughs> preseason yeah. uh, order. Sam Laporta's at four. On pace for 91, 9, 22, and 9, and he's going to get it. I'm going to tell you right now. Laporta is... He from the first snap of the first game, he's been yeah. a go go to receiver. Kittle at five, benefiting from the lack of Debo lately. Komet at six, Thomas, Logan Thomas at seven, Evan Ingram at eight, Dallas Goddard at nine, and Darren Waller at ten. Mm -hmm. Man, so you've got four tight ends. Through you're counting through Laporta. I oh absolutely. Sam Laporta, I would love to have in fantasy. If you've got him on your roster, you have a great tight end most every week certainly good enough does, to, does that hurt you does it hurt me yeah yeah no why would it because he's a rookie oh no 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 that's fine he's not Dalton Kincaid <laughs> <laughs> Dalton Kincaid is the is by far the Dalton Kincaid's on his way Dalton Kincaid is the one I want for the 
the rest of the season yeah, out of this top 10 group. Like if you – like what I, I'd take Kincaid over Kittle. Yeah. So I'd yeah. put Kincaid at five right now based on the way that the second half of the season is looking. Yeah, I, 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 Kittle to me is someone that I just can't, I, I can't take his levels of inconsistency. You know, uh, Kittle right now four awesome games and four games under five fantasy points. They just completely disappear. Um, we talked about uh, Trey McBride, someone that oh, could man. have a second half of the season breakout. Um, we haven't seen as much from him in a longer period of time so you'd certainly have Kincaid above McBride but McBride is right there and then and then Fergie Jake Ferguson we we like Dak's second half sleeper potential the matchups it, it, it goes it goes well with Ferguson as well I mean, he's tied with Kelsey for the most tight end red zone targets with 11 of them already okay Trey McBride where where Ho are you hopefully at? on the I, I was in a great place and then the you know I think it's going to be a bumpy situation this week. I'm saying like rest of season. I'm I'm having I think Trey McBride is above Logan Thomas. I'm having a very difficult time with yeah. Trey McBride. Like we uh, today's Dynasty podcast, we featured a lot of uh, Will Levis and Trey McBride talk. If you want to go check that out, but like I am, <laughs> that is such not a sell. For <laughs> the, I mean, it is now, but it like. Had that been your uh, like pitch for the <laughs> Dynasty podcast a few weeks ago, oh. I'd be like jam packed with Will Levis and Trey McBride hey, chatter. Dynasty people know it's all, but you, you don't want to talk about just high level guys. No, you want to talk no. about nasty boys. Uh, but like I am in two Dynasty leagues. Trey McBride is on the roster in both of them, so like I am emotionally invested in Trey McBride being good. So. I'm I'm having a hard time restricting myself of what we saw. Thirty nine percent of the targets last week. Essentially, when Trey McBride has been the featured tight end with with no Zach Ertz to compete with, we've we have two monster games that that many tight ends will never get close to in their entire career. So moving forward, like projecting that Kyler is back would like so let's say. So Logan Thomas, you said you'd rather. What about Dallas Goddard or Trey McBride? Andy, <laughs> I, I want the targets, man. I want to know that the targets are coming every week. Right now, I, is that Trey McBride or it's Goddard? It's Trey McBride. Okay. Right now, Dallas Goddard is very capable of having a big week, but I'm not sure he's much different than the outlook that you'd have on Kittle or somebody. Like, it seems like he lucks into a, a touchdown, but he's not featured. I mean that is not he he'll get some tight end screens but I want I want to shoot for the moon man I want Kincaid and I want McBride and I want some guys that might get 10 to 15 targets on the right week. Mm -hmm. Dallas, I just don't see Dallas Goddard having 10 targets. Goddard has yeah he doesn't have a, a 10 target game but What's we, his target lead game? I would be curious. It's 9. It, oh, it, all right. It's 9 but I mean he's he's averaging 6 per game but that has turned into two really strong performances but every other game so six of the games he is at under seven points and a half point score. I feel like when when things go wrong, Goddard gets a target. I feel like when things go right, McBride and Kincaid and Laporta get focused on. Like I okay. there's just not I have not seen a lot of on purpose Goddard targets outside his screen game. So uh, I do want to invite everybody listening to uh become a part of our fantasy football community at jointhefoot.com. It's our official Foot Clan community. And uh, you get the privilege of hanging out with a bunch of really awesome human beings, over 30,000 fantasy football fans. You get a bonus weekly podcast. You get a bonus injury podcast every week if you're part of the Foot Clan premiere. And you get premium in-season tools like our Stream Finder tool, which is you know a key part of how we identify starts of the week and how players are performing. You get to play in the Megala Bowl. If you uh, if you stay with us every year, we do the Megala Bowl. You get to be a part of the Discord channels, and and there's a lot of cool perks. You can learn about that by going to jointhefoot.com. Unless we have more news, Brooksy, I think I'm going to shut this thing down. You got anything special to tell us? Shut her down. All right. Well, enjoy your Christmas. Oh boy. Yeah. Go ahead, Mike. Hit the bells. I don't support it. 
But I don't have a choice. It's great. It's two, it's two thirds. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.